Hi everyone, this is Marjorie Wildcraft and I'm in Springfield, Missouri today uh, with Mike Brown of Mike Brown Steam Engines. Who'd have thought? And Mike, for you the question I've got is why would somebody buy a steam engine and, and why not have a diesel or a gas generator or some other form of power for backup uh, power supplies? Well, the power goes out for about three weeks. You'll find that out real quick because the same power that powers your little generator with gasoline, well, it comes up out of gas tanks at the local service stations. And what you find out is when the power goes out, so does the power to bring up the fuel, and then the fuel runs out. Because what you'll have is, for example, the whole idea of a steam engine is you have what's called a logistically independent fuel source. If you're going to power your little generator, you're going to have to go buy fuel from someplace because I doubt if you have the resources to pump it out of the ground, refine it, transport it, distribute it, uh, and then eventually get it to your generator. Whereas a steam engine, you basically eliminate all those steps simply because you just pick stuff up on the ground like you know, logs or wood or tree limbs after an ice storm. Corn cobs, sawdust, government documents, you name it. <laughs> I like the, that, uh, government documents, yeah. You know, a steam engine's going to run on it. Anything that burns will make a steam engine operate. The only thing you have to concern yourself with is when you build the boiler, because a steam engine doesn't care how you make the steam. When you build the boiler, you simply have to make a distinction. Is Are you going to run liquid or solid fuel? Most of the people we sell them to run solid fuel. And so, literally, you have a source of power that will last for generations, if not for centuries. For example, there's a steam locomotive in India. It's been in constant daily service since 1855. Wow. There's one in a sugar mill in Brazil. Same thing, constant daily service since 1877. Wow. So if it hits the fan and civilization collapses, like a lot of people think it's going to, I don't belong to the chicken little school of thought myself. I don't think the sky is falling. I don't think anybody needs to run and tell the king. But, by the same token, when all your neighbors are out of power because they can't get fuel for their generators after a few weeks, it's like the old saying goes, in the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. So, here is, here is one of your three horsepower steam engines, and it's running, oh, you're running an uncompressed gas air here just to test it, but this is what they look like, and they're really pretty small, I guess the boiler is going to be larger, but what can I realistically expect to run in my household? with a three horsepower engine like this? Well, pretty much everything, because you're going to get, if you're storing uh, power in a bank of batteries like the people with the wind and solar do, in uh, four hours you're going to get about six kilowatts, and if you parse it out, that'll normally take a house from day to day, simply because what you're also going to get is you're going to get about 40,000 BTUs of steam heat out the exhaust, which you recirculate. And you use that in each power. So with a three horsepower steam engine, I'm going to be able to run most of my lighting and my cooling, my computers. Pretty much, but you have to be a you have to be a little circumspect. I mean, you're not going to run everything at once: washer, dryer, air conditioner the whole bit. In other words, you've got to understand you've just got so much power available in a certain amount of time. What What is a three horsepower equivalent in kilowatts for those that are doing solar panels and are familiar with that? 1.5 uh, kilowatts. kilowatts are measured by the hour. Now a lot of people say that it's you know, so many kilowatts per hour, which technically isn't correct, but it's easier to tell people that than you know, look down your nose and say, oh, you don't understand it. And that's what I'm not So that's, that's, that's a pretty good amount of of, um, power. Well, let me put it this way. That little engine you saw there, I mean, it's this big. You put it up against one of these 40 to 100 foot wind generators, and it will produce more power. Wow. And, and um, you know, you don't have these batteries that only have, at the most, a 10 year life cycle. They're, they're full of um, heavy metals. You also don't have any concerns from EMP or electromagnetic pulse. Well, now, EMP, that's a good point because. If you have an EMP problem, which you can get from a solar flare, just like they did in 1859, are you familiar with the Carrington effect? Yeah. Okay. Fried all the uh, telegraph Telegraphs lines. Telegraphs along the railroads. Yeah. Well, it's, it's all, it was everywhere. It was in the United States and Europe. 
And the reason our our infrastructure didn't go on the toilet at the time like it will now because an EMP will destroy every transistor out there. You see all these vehicles here? Not one of them will work with an EMP except that one. That's an 84 Chevy without any transistors. But what, uh, what happened in 1859 is there was no problem because I don't care whether you have an EMP or a thermal nuclear explosion that just doesn't tip the machine over. Steam engine is just going to sit there and look at it. It's got to be completely irrelevant to the steam engine what kind of electricity you've got floating around in the air. Wow. Well, Mike, thank you so much. I have personally wanted a steam engine for many, many years, and after doing a tour of your shop here, I'm very, very impressed uh, with the manufacturing. And you manufacture all the parts and everything here in the United States for those engines. Uh, that is correct. In fact, I'd like to give people a little aside here. You can buy steam engines cheaper elsewhere. And there's an outfit in India, which you may be nameless, that makes them for about half of what we do. However, they use automotive parts. You can't use automotive parts in a steam engine because then it's the equivalent of lugging down the engine, which wears it out prematurely. In fact, uh, last expo that we had here, the expo before last, the one that you're going to tomorrow, we had a guy who bought one of them from India and came up and says, you know, he said, I couldn't figure out what was wrong with this thing. He said, because it kept jumping all over the place. And so then he described the bearings, and they were using automotive bearings. You have to use roller bearings in a steam engine, or it's just not going to last. Wow. So it's like almost anything else that you're going to buy. When you buy the higher quality stuff, that's what's going to last you through the generations. You get what you pay for. You get what you pay for. Wow. Well, Mike, how can people get in touch with you if they would like to? And what other sizes of uh, engines do you have available? Okay, well, <laughs> having available, so that's a good question, Like. We've got. Uh, You're selling horse. out of them pretty fast. Huh? We sell them faster than we put them together. In yeah. fact, it's kind of a miracle we've actually got one in there that's not spoken for. The other one is. The guy's supposed to come down and pick it up next week. Normally, what people do is they just pay their money and wait their turn in the line, and we get to them when we get to them. Uh -huh. So it's right now we're about four months back. And what what sizes do you have available? Well, we've got one and three, which we we may be turning over to a fellow in Montana. We have a 20 horse that's extremely complicated to put together. And right now we're in the process of developing a more universal model of an 8 horse that will turn a 5 kilowatt generator, uh, which will be hopefully a lot simpler to uh, put together and repair. Than what we have. Nice. And people can get in touch with you through www.mikebrownsolutions.com. Mike yeah, and what we recommend is people order the special steam package, do their homework, and they go running out there and trying to design a whole system. We get people all the time that think they know water oil turns to steam, so therefore that qualifies them to design a system, and it doesn't. Wow. Well, thank you so much, Mike. I really appreciate your time and the tour of the factory, and um, I'm personally going to be on your waiting list. Thanks a lot. Okay, great.